so here it is just a primary endo there is no periodontal involvement in this case what we have done is we'll just open remove all the caries do a nice isolation do your uh, regular order or regular endodontic therapy okay with a full irrigation and you're done that's it and this case if you see properly there is a periodontal ligament uh, there is a winding of your pdl okay in this we open we give a calcium hydroxide we relieve the tooth from your occlusion here because already your periodontal ligament has been involved in this so we relieve the tooth from the occlusion so that you give a time frame for your periodontal ligament to heal right so here there is a just a single line of pdl widening you can see here so here we did same we went with an endo only we didn't touch anything re re related to perio we just kept uh, went on with your irrigating and then uh, place a calcium hydroxide and then give a one week or two week time and then go ahead with your obturation and you're done and this if you see this case there is a there is a disruption of your periodontal ligament involving the periapical lesion so in this case, similarly, you will go with your endo first, removing all the caries, okay, and do a and do a proper irrigation protocol, and then place a calcium hydroxide for two weeks. Sorry. Uh, and then place a calcium hydroxide with for two weeks, and after that you check with your check with your uh, uh, whether pay, patient is having any pain or not, and then only you will go with your obturation further, right? And this is one more case where you can see a epic same here also the uh, apical third is like involved and there also communication from your uh, lateral canals. So for this case also initially we went place a calcium hydroxide, make sure your lesion is healing and then go ahead with your obturation. If you feel that you're if you if you feel still the patient is complaining about pain then don't go ahead with your obturation and wait until your periodontal ligament is healing. The moment it is healing, then go ahead with your endo and then go ahead with your prosthetic part. And this case, you can see the furcal involvement here. Still, you will go with your endo first. Place the calcium hydroxide for two weeks in this case also because there is a lesion which is like bigger lesion involving both the rules, both the roots as well as your furcal involvement. So still I went, went down with your endo only, place the calcium hydroxide, still it healed. So we didn't do any periodontal therapy here. It was just endo that has been healed till here. Okay. And for all the above cases, there were no pockets, there were no mobility. There were no pocket and there were no mobility. That's the only reason why we just we just ended up doing only endo for those cases. Okay, if you see this case, this is an iatrogenic error that has been happened. Okay, there was a communication from the uh, palpal cham chamber to the uh, to the periodontium. Okay, so first we repaired it and placed the calcium hydroxide, and there was grade one mobility. There was no, uh, not grade two or grade three. So we took a periodontal uh, evaluation. It was grade one mobility. Though it has a bone loss, we still tried to manage with endo itself. And however, we went during uh, taking a scaling and a root planing in this case. Okay. So did a good endo, just uh, sealed the perforation site and then placed a bioceram bio, uh, bioceramic material inside. And the... And now there was a, uh, there was increased, the mobility has not been increased. So there was also a bone formation that has happened. It is because of the bioceramic material that has been placed in the canal because it, it promotes your bone growth. It, it activates your osteoblast to form more bone. So there was increased bone formation. So there was no any other flap elevation or during curatage and everything was not done in this case also. Okay. So what are the best materials whenever your endoperio lesions are concerned? If it's just an endo, you have many other types of sealers or uh, materials that are available. You can go ahead. But if you're facing something, your periodon, like per, both endo and perio are involved, go ahead with your bioceramics. You can have a better results with this. You can go ahead with any kind of uh, MTA, whether it is a, uh, whether 
by um, dear Philip X sealer or a material that can be kept in the canals, you can go ahead. If at all you're expecting any fractures, just fill the canal with your MTA. That would be sufficient. It is good to go. And this could cost you around much lesser price whenever you compare with your endo sequence BC. Uh, so endo sequence BC would cost you more uh, cost effect, like more cost. It would cost you around 12,000. Whereas your MTA Philip X would cost you around three to 4,000 or else Seracil would cost you 5000 so these these two materials could be better if you want to achieve a better results in your endoperiolations and again endo sequence root repair material is different when compared to the sealer okay sealer is something which you use in the canal whereas root repair material where you do a root and resection you cut the apical third of your root and then fill the material retrogradely inside the canal so for that for that in those cases you can use your mta like MTA, this kind of MTAs, you can use your bio MTA. If you can see, yes, you can use your bio MTA or any kind of MTA powder liquid material. But they, they could be uh, difficult initially to manipulate and place inside your canals. That's where your endo sequence uh, root repair material comes into action. You can easily place that root repair material from your retrograde preparation, right? So this could be a seracil that, that is available. It, it, it sees like this. Your MTA, it is available many you know these two are available easily whereas endo sequence bcc it is not available in the market that easily yeah now your endo part is done whatever the lesion if it's like primary endo and secondary perio or else endo you will start with your endo and complete your endo and you will achieve a better results now what if it's a perio or a true combined lesion okay now, now have to concentrate more on your perio because there you can see more mobility and also there would be a more bone loss whether it could be both horizontal bone loss or else mostly vertical bone loss you could see in these results so this is a this is not a treatment plan set by me this is a treatment plan given by the uh, uh, given by the studies okay in this they're saying gtr as well as your bone grafts play a major role whenever you're treating your periodontal lesions. So this is like an example. See, here is a bony defect, okay? We'll elevate the flap, raise the flap, and then curatage completely and make sure, uh, make sure you have curatage everything and then place your bone graft inside. Your bone graft could be like this. If you can see, your bone graft could be this. Okay, you place a bone graft and then place a membrane on top of your bone graft. Okay, so that's how you do a periodontical therapy. For example, this is this is a this is a case taken from the same sequential approach of the treatment from endoperiolation. But they have seen there was a period treatment initially. There is there is no carious lesion or anything such as involved in this particular case. There is only the period that has been involved and the tooth has been uh, infected. So they have measured the pocket and they have checked whether there was any furcal involvement or not. And then they have raised the flap, elevated the flap, place the bone graft material and then place the membrane on the graft and then suture it back. Okay. And then you go ahead with your follow-ups and this is the, they also went with the endo simultaneously you will do with your endo. And this was the follow-up treatment where it was healed both endodontically as well as periodontically. Okay. This is how you'll approach if, if it's a true combined lesion or it is already involved with your perio primarily and secondarily endo, then you would go with this, this kind of a procedure, okay? These are few cases where in this case, I didn't use any, uh, any bone graft. We just checked. There was, there was no carious lesion in this case also. There is only bone loss that to a vertical bone loss uh, involving the distal root. So initially we checked the pocket and then we went ahead with our endo. And after endo, we just elevated the flap completely cure attached and then again positioned back and checked uh, for the results and it was better there was no bone graft or anything that is placed in this particular case okay and this is one more case this is a uh, dense evaginators that is present so in this case there was no carious lesion or anything just the sinus tract opening was there and when the moment we took a radiograph, there was a big bony defect involving the distal part of your lateral. So initially we went, uh, went ahead with the endo first 
and it's also an open apex. So endo was done initially and then elevated the flap. So this is a big bony defect and then placed a hydroxy hepatite membrane was placed. I couldn't take the picture. So, and then again, position the flap back and then this is the follow. -up.